depends on you to use you. Satan depends on you to control you. God depends on you to use you. The Gospel of Life, Incorruption, Immortality, and Sonship with the Bondservant of Christ, John Anosike. Why we live in this temporal world never be captured in temporality, always be captured with the consciousness of eternity. Because God brought to us the fullness of God. Of His fullness have we received. Now, I don't what want you to be excited about it. Oh, I've got the fullness of God. I, 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 I have the fullness of God. I've got the fullness of God. I, I know you have it. It's a promise. It's your birthright in Christ. I get that. When you got born again, that's your birthright. But the fullness of God is not weird to any man who's three dimensional persons have not yet come under the dominion of Zion. Oh, see, do you know what it means to obtain the fullness of God? Who is God first? Look into the characteristics of God, the attributes of God, the nature of God, the abilities of God. Because if you really want to understand what it means to have received the fullness of God, then we ought to know who God is. If you don't know what you're receiving, you, you may not necessarily know the value and the capacity of what you have received if you don't know what you're receiving. So if we have received the fullness of God, who is God? To what degree are you functioning if you have received the fullness of God, the first thing you know that God don't die. God can't die. God doesn't know death. God doesn't know unrighteousness. The Bible says in him there is no darkness. <laughs> God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. God is the creator. God is in control. The luxuries of his presence, the air, the breath of his luxuries causes earthquake. His hand has formed the crooked serpent. He is the Lord of times and seasons. 
So if we have received the fullness of God, it means that we have received the fullness of love. We have received the love nature of God. We have received the fate of God, the creative force of God's fate. It means that we are the exact reflection of God on earth. Why is it that only humanity, only mankind was given the fullness of God? To some degrees, every creature of God had some element, some atom of God's nature. But mankind was weird, was given the position to accept the fullness of God. Why? Because of the declaration of God in eternity and he said, let us make man in our image. Let them have our likeness. Let them have dominion. So the ultimate position of man is the fullness of God. Now here's what Satan has done. He wants you to ask for things that are not consistent with his fullness. He, he, he wants you to be busy with certain things that God would give you but not part of his fullness. Praise the Lord. My prayer offering for you as, a, as your shepherd is for your consciousness to be captured in the realities of the spirit, in the realities of God's truths, and in the realities of God's life. So that the threefold man is redeemed from the curses that are within the three dimensions. If you escape the curse of the human spirit, how about the curse of the human soul? Okay, let's assume you escaped the curses of the human spirit because you got born again, and then you, want, you are striving to escape the curses of the unrenewed mind, how about the curses of mortality in your body? So if Satan doesn't get you spiritually, he's going to get you mentally. If he doesn't get you mentally, he will try to get you physically. So the church has kept us so much in the, in the blessings of the spirit. And some have kept us in the blessings of but the spirit and the soul and less has been said concerning the, the physical body. But thanks be unto God that our ministry is poised by the Holy Ghost to bring about the redemption of the entire man. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if the devil doesn't kill your spirit, he will try to kill your soul. If he doesn't kill your soul, he will try to kill your body. One of the things that I was so concerned about many years ago was, you know, have you heard that the devil comes after people, after they got born again? I asked myself this question many years ago. That what got me into searching the scriptures. I, I loved the idea that I'm born again, that's okay. I believed and I, I loved the idea that I have the Holy Ghost, I'm tongue talking, my names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, wonderful, I love those ideas. But my question was, if Satan has lost me completely, 
when I got born again why then was he still after me why is the devil still after you that means there is something that Satan knows and God knows that you don't know are you with me source of God that's that means there is something Satan knows that you don't know. There is something that Satan knows that you don't know. And later on, the Holy Spirit began to open my spirit to realize that Satan can terminate your entire salvation in the process if your soul and body do not come into alignment with the truths of God. Paul used the phrase, I do not want to be a castaway. And what is it that he promoted that could possibly disqualify him, his body? Is that I will strive to perfect, to kick, to prune, to cut, to discipline, to consecrate to oppress, to scourge, to scourge my body and bring it into subjection so that I am not disqualified and be a castaway. I don't know what that means. I don't need any revelation on that. I want to keep it as literal as it is. Don't bring your Genesis revelation. Don't bring your grace revelation. Keep it as it is. Don't try to bring your seductive, heretic spirit into trying to manipulate phrases in scriptures to fit into your illusions and manipulation of congregations. Paul was clear as it is that your body, if not brought under subjection, could disqualify you in the last days. And Jesus repeated the same. He said that many shall come that day and say, Lord, 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 I healed the sick in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I raised the dead. I preached Jesus. And what got my interest in that scripture is that these folks called him Lord. Have you not been taught? Is, is this not the agreement that if you confess Jesus as your Lord, you'll be saved? So this man called Jesus Lord. And immediately Jesus responded and he says, Depart from me you walk as of iniquities you lived in sin you walked iniquities you became an instrument of sin satan used you you became a channel of seduction a channel of deceit a channel of hate a channel of division confusion strive every work of the flesh had expression through you depart from me you never sought for my sanctification you never sought for repentance you abolished and aborted every godly sorrow that i projected into your conscience you hardened your heart when my spirit convicted your heart, you hardened your heart. Depart from me, you are a worker of iniquity. You exhausted every level of grace that I brought into your life. I am full of grace. I could have saved Judas Iscariot. I'm God, I'm love. But Judas is mental, spiritual, physical disposition opposed, rejected, objected my grace. 
Don't you know that your will, your decisions are far greater than the influence of God and the devil? Satan depends on you to use you. Satan depends on you to control you. God depends on you to use you. God cannot use you if you don't let him. Satan cannot use you if you don't let him. That's how powerful you are. And the true salvation is found in communion, fellowship, worship. Let me tell you something. You know, you can agree with me that even though a child has been admitted in a in a in, in a school does not mean that that child will graduate admission doesn't mean so sex admission doesn't mean that you will pass the school born again is admission into the school of god into the school of salvation you can be admitted and not even come to classes you can be admitted into school and not even write your exams i know of so many students that were admitted that never passed this their, their, their exams they dropped out they have lied to you that if you born again you've got it all that's a lie i know so many christians so many foolish believers who have obtained eternal life by the grace of jesus christ but they don't walk in the ways of christ they have no time to come to the knowledge of christ eternal life that is not lived in the ways of christ that is not lived according to the truths of christ is heading for extinction it's fruitfulness let me give you a very classic classified example now the scripture says fate without works is dead is it correct then the same scripture in the same context now likened faith without works as a body with that spirit is dead thank you somebody got it at the back there Now, we are not concerned about your eternal life. Your eternal life is the life of your spirit. But a spirit without a body is likened to deadness. So you can have eternal life if you don't have the life of the soul, which of course is the truth. And you don't have the life of the body, which of course is to walk in the ways, in the precepts and the purposes of God concerning you, you are equal as dead. So that's why Jesus introduced to us the fullness of salvation which he called eternal life the way of god and the truths of god let me tell you this the soul ate the tree of knowledge and died.
In other words, before Adam died in the garden, he did not have a spirit life. He had a soul life. So there has to be a tree of knowledge. And that tree of knowledge is a certain kind of knowledge, a certain kind of either falsehood or lies or truth. So if you eat lies, you die. You, you, you die in the place of your soul. The first man as a living soul, the Bible is very clear about it. You don't have to object that. The Bible says a man became a living soul. And Paul confirmed that man was a soul in Corinthians when he wrote and said the first man was made a living soul. And then he says the last man was made a life-giving spirit. So the life of your soul is the truth of Christ. The life of your body is the discipline to walk in the precepts of God. You, you. Let me tell you something. Once immorality prevails in your life, mortality will prevail. But when you mortify, immortality will prevail. Immorality versus immortality. Immorality enhances mortality. Mortifying the deeds of the flesh advances immortality. What is immortality? Immortality is when we have put in on, when we have put on the truth of God in the soul of man, the garment of the soul. The garment of the soul is the truth that we have received in our mind, in our urges, in our intellect that inspires motivates, drives our choices. Can I hear amen sons of God? So the fullness of God is a function of coming to the ways of God, coming to the truth of Christ as we have received eternal life. My question tonight is not about if you are born again or if you have the Holy Spirit or if you pray in tongues or if you belong to a church my question tonight for you is watch your way Jesus says I am the way it does not mean that if you have Jesus you have the way no uh -uh. that's the problem because we think that if I, if I have Jesus, if I believe in Jesus, I am in the way. No, that's not the principle of walking in the ways of Christ. When Jesus said, I am the way, what does that mean to you? Christ in you is eternal life in you and that trust in you is in your spirit i'll show you how 
to walk in the ways of Christ. I'll show you what it means to walk in the ways of God. I'll show you what it means to, to have Christ as the way. It's, you see, we've been seduced, we've been lied to, we've been taught all kinds of nonsense. I grew up eating such junks. That if you have Christ, you're in the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God, may God deliver us. So it's not true. It's not true. Don't mistake your faith in Christ for the salvation of your spirit as walking in the ways of God. Don't mistake walking in the ways of God as having the truth of God. Truth is for the salvation of your soul. Walking in the ways of God is for the salvation of your body. So these are different principles. A spirit need a renewed mind and a transformed body to function. Eternal life can never dominate you if your soul has not absorbed the truth of God and your body walk in the ways of God. Eternal life becomes depleted. Stop confusing yourself. We have ridiculed God for too long. God has been reduced to a mere religion because there's no power. There's no glory. The Bible says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They are forms of God, but, but, but there's no power. There's no change. Where there is power, there is willingness. Where there is power, there is change. If you say there is power, then there ought to be change. In the day of power, the people should be willing. <laughs> Can I hear amen, sons of God? In the day of power, the people should be what? They should be willing. So the question is, what does it mean to walk in the ways of God? show you hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus mm. who also declared unto us your love in the spirit for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you for what reason and to desire that ye might be filled, be filled, be fi that you might be with, with what? With the knowledge of his truth, his truth, the knowledge of his will. Just put the word will, replace will with truth. Be filled with the knowledge of his truth. Why? It says that, that thy might, that you might do what? Of all, okay, be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual what? Understanding through the truth. Now the next verse tells us what that is for. For what? That you may walk in the way That you may walk worthy. That you may walk. You see that? That's not how to walk in the way of God. How on earth could anybody walk in the ways of God if he is not filled with the knowledge of truth? All you want is 
I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna. He's he, he's not gonna die. She's not gonna die. What do you mean by that? What does it mean not to die? What does it mean not to be sick? What does it mean not to be poor? That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being fruit, walking worthy of the Lord, being fruitful in every good work. How? Being filled with the knowledge of His will. My name is Apostle Raymond from Namibia. I came across the videos of the Born Servant of Christ on Facebook in 2022, that was in October, which was an amazing discovery for me because I have been learning so much from his uh, revelations and his, the mysteries, the way he interprets the Word of God. And I came to encounter the gospel of incorruption of uh, immortality and it, it's it's just mind-blowing really so last year in october i decided to come and uh, pay a visit to the ministry that was my very first time and it was an amazing experience being here it was powerful i encountered the lord so mightily um whether through the word and and, and through the demonstration of the power of god it was really just amazing before I went back, I got the privilege to be prayed for by the men of God, of which was a, um, was a blessing to my life as an individual and a blessing to my nation and my ministry, my congregation. I was imparted with so much grace, with so much power that when I went back, there was a great transformation in the ministry. He brought us all the experiences that he had home. And as a result, the whole family now follows Pastor John. And we also got great encounters at home where you would follow the online services. And when there are prayers or miracles released, you also receive at home. And so for this year, we, I came with my sister to attend um, the conference, the belly of the beast and the false earth, which has been a blessing to us. Although we arrived on the second day of the conference, we, we, we got more you know, than enough. And I was blown away by the interpretation of the word. I have read the Bible before. I have studied the Bible before but never have I ever encountered such interpretation the way he placed it upon us on that day. It was, it was mind blowing, it was, it was really amazing. And I thank God for that because my mind once again was enlightened. I received more wisdom on the word and more understanding on the scriptures of the word of God. For me, um, I would say that my mindset has been changed. Um, I had kind of a religious mindset, not to say that I was part of the Catholics and so forth, but um, I didn't experience the power of the Word of God. Um, the conference really opened my mind to that. I, I realized that um, the enemy really deceives us a lot to prevent us from manifesting that power that God has given us through His Word. And this conference really opened up my mind to realize that as a child of God, I carry so much power and ability to do so many things and the greatest weapon that the enemy uses in our lives as believers is fear because you keep thinking that I can't do this only a certain man of God a woman of God can do it but me as a child of God I can't it was a really mighty mighty word that Pastor John gave us and I realized that I have the ability to do so much more than what I thought before Anytime you're under a surge of attack, be it health-wise, even heart failure, or it's as though you're dying, don't worry, you will not die. What you're going to do is at that moment, deal with fear. Stay 
peaceful. Don't let fear creep you. Hmm? Bind fear. Hold fear first. Don't pray. Stop praying. Because at that point in time, you are, your, your prayer is going nowhere. So under tension, under fear, you've already breached. You've blocked the frequencies of faith. You will start sinking already. So what you're going to do at that point in time is to silence your fear. Come up again to the realm of faith and solitude. I really learned a lot about power and why it is very much important to not just preach the word but demonstrate the word. As the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in word but in the demonstration of power. On the last day of the conference, I did not even ask for it. But that day, the man of God pointed, pointed me out. Come. Are you pastor? Okay. He, he called the two of us out and he, he, he told us to, to both stand in front. Stand here. And he started with, uh, with the first brother and he, he held him. What is this? There is an emission. This can melt cancers. This can rectify broken bones. You know why? Cancer in your blood is not human creation. Cancer in your blood is demonic. It's a creation of the devil. Spiritual. Okay, let's put that aside. Your kidney your liver, your pancreas, your bones, your eyeballs, your brain cells, your liver, your, your, your intestines, your esophagus, every organ of your body, it's never human creation. It's God. God, God formed it. Nobody created human. Everything that you are was never created by any human. Who created it? God. Who is God? Spirit. And so he came to me and in that moment I was, I was so ready. I, I was so ready. I, I couldn't wait. And he held me. What is this? What is this? That's how we rectify the human body when he helped me i immediately this electricity just started entering my body and i i i, I felt as though i wanted to to like burst out in tongues and and, and it, but it was just too much so i, I kind of just started groaning and I fell to the ground with my hands just pressed down to the ground because the power was too much i felt so much has entered me that i let let them not tell you the fall the scream is nothing this is the devil trying to ridicule the only way the human body can be restored repaired healed healed and restored my encounter with the born servant of christ brought me understanding on the about the call of god upon my life it brought me so much direction it has freed up so many fears in me and in my walk with the lord and i have come to really open up my eyes to the things that i only felt but couldn't see i i i felt and i and i saw and i i got the clear vision and the clear understanding of what god was doing I'm an authority. Spirit Revelation Ecclesia presents No More Sorrow, No More Death, No More Disease, 
No More Poverty Sunday with the bond servant of Christ, John. We have lived in the world of the dead for too long. We have lived in the world of mortality for too long. We have lived in the world of confusion for too long. I have come through faith to create another world. I have come by faith to frame another world that I have found in the reign of the Spirit. I'm creating a world of eternal life, a world of incorruption, a world of immortality. I don't have to call your name to remove your disease. I don't have to tell your address to remove that ancestral curses. Jesus didn't have time to tell blind Bartimaeus what the cause of his blindness was, but he had time to say, receive thy sight. It's time to live and not die. Come and receive life. Come and receive joy, healing, miracles, and restoration. You are next in line to testify. Venue, 284 Vortrecker Road, Maitland, Cape Town. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's offering time. Amen. Now, first of all, I want to thank our spiritual oversight, the sinned ones of God, the angels of this house, our Papa, Pastor John Anasiki, and Mama, Pastor Ola Anasiki, for granting me this opportunity to take up the offering. Now, before I start, you know, if we just look around us and we see the few people that are here, then we can see why the man of God cries out, heart out on this altar. But let us keep praying and let us know God is depending on us as we are depending on God also. Amen. Now the scripture is Genesis 8 verse 22. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not seed, cease. Seed time and harvest time will stay with us as long as the earth remains. You know, as we dwell deeper on this scripture, things start opening up. You get seed from God. And you know, the more seed you sow, the stronger the seed is, the bigger the harvest, and the better. Amen? Now, if you don't sow, it's the same like that land is lying vacant there but things will grow on there things you don't want things you don't need and it's the same as papa will say let's bring it near home it's the same in your life things you don't want to happen to you will start happening things will start breaking down a lot of expenses will come your way and you don't even know this god is covering you in more ways than one. Now tonight, as you come up, come with that understanding. You are giving to a loving God. Amen. As you are depending on Him, He is depending on you. And with your offering, bring an offering for the man of God. Because we know how much this man of God is putting into this ministry. Amen. Now, you can bring up your offerings, put it on the altar with a, a small prayer, not long, small prayer, and I will also pray with you. Amen. So you can come, please. Thank you, Lord, for this faithful ones. My God, you know their heart. 
You know everything about them. You know their strength by God. You know their weaknesses. Lord, let this offering bring them a harvest far more than what they expect. Let this harvest, let they bear witness how this harvest manifests right before their eyes during this week, my God. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there is still people that know we are depending on you, my God. Oh, Lord, bless each and every one that gave tonight. Bless the going out and the coming in. The evil eye won't see them. The evil hand won't touch them. And I thank you, my God. Thank you for our man of God, Lord. Bless him there who is busy in the ministry, my God. And let him know, Lord, that we are lifting up his hands from this side in prayer tonight. I thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Can we just stand for the benediction? And now may the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy will dwell with us as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Immortality. Death impossible. Divine health. Sickness impossible. Divine protection. Destruction impossible. Divine provision. Poverty impossible. Divine direction. Mistakes impossible. Holy communion. COVID-19 impossible. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Seven amens. Amen. 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 Go and be truly blessed. Amen and amen. Thank you.